Hello viewers and welcome to a bit more F1 2013 Of course we had the Grand Prix today and, uh, and though I'm not doing my F1 blogs I was in the mood today so I thought I'd have a quick drive and a quick chat about F1 Good to see it back in Europe of course This is where they often say the season starts uh, And it's good to see all the teams making improvements to their cars uh, especially Renault of course who were uh, starting the season with a disadvantage Mercedes are so strong this year it's been mentioned by the commentators you know we've not seen anything like that since Ferrari or Williams or even McLaren in 98 when they were so strong as well so it's a period of dominance for them it will change eventually but uh, for the foreseeable future at least it's going to be a big battle between Nico and Lewis and it's great to see that the team is letting the the guys fight you know it, and it was a close race today it was a close call it has been these last few races i know the tv likes to bump up each driver and their psychology and everything and there is a lot of psychology to it today and i i think we heard that by you know lewis uh, who was you know he's having a go at his team today and i couldn't help but feel while i was watching that you know he he was looking for an excuse if he didn't win today it was going to be the pit stop wasn't good enough the front wing was wound wrong uh, something wasn't done right when we set the car up um, and I, I don't know whether that's his psychology to help him in some way or uh, to push his team I don't know but uh, certainly it's it's all quiet from the from Nico Rosberg's side and I noticed that the sky coverage in particular focused on the length of time of Lewis's pit stop but missed Nico's entirely so it's, which apparently wasn't any quicker so it's interesting the news that kind of comes out and what the reality is but I, I think it shows that they're trying to keep a certain buoyancy in Lewis because Lewis does you know I find when things don't, don't go his way he does get a bit down in the mouth very quickly so it's important for him to try and get that lead where he can feel more relaxed I think Nico's really got the bit between his teeth. I, I look forward to uh, Monaco, and I, I think this is going to go all the way. There's going to be massive pressure. We're only early days, and they're not even talking to each other before the podium. Uh, let's see what we're like in another 10 races' time. And uh, it's going to be no fun for them, but lots of fun for us watching, because I do like to see the drama unfold between the drivers. Of course, it would be nice to see you know, drivers such as Fernando in his Ferrari up there, because for me, Fernando is the most complete driver on the grid. And I've no doubt if he had a competitive car every year, he'd be winning world championships every year. Um, it's not always the way. I mean, people mention Senna and they say he would have won more titles. Well, Fernando is just like that. You know, he would have many titles if he had had the car. And I think what he's managed to do in recent years with a car that's not the one uh, is fantastic. I think another driver in a similar sort of boat is Jensen. You know, he's had a terrible year last year. Uh, he's had a, a, you know, in terms of the car performance and not being able to get anywhere, not score any points. A very difficult year again this year in terms of, you know, started off okay and McLaren have gone backwards and of course with the passing of his father as well. It's been a tough year for him and we'd like to see him in a, you know, better car. You know, a car that has capability of winning at the moment. So it's a tough one for him. Good to see Lotus coming back into it. Very pleased to see the performance improvements there. It's just a shame that you know, Grosjean seems to be on his own and that Pasta, as much as you feel, sometimes you say he's unlucky and sometimes you say, well, that was just bad driving, you know, and it's it's a real shame for Pasta because he's better than that and yet right now it just doesn't seem like his head's in the right place and they, they really need to sort that out or, you know, obviously he's bringing a lot of money to the team, so, but he's just not going to benefit from it if he doesn't get his driving back up to standard because he's not helping the team in terms of improving the performance. Either way, good result from Roman today and despite seemingly having some problems and falling back towards the latter half of the race, it was good to see that improvement. So an enjoyable race nevertheless, I mean, you know, people talk about races whether exciting or not, I can say that Bahrain for me always used to bore me. Uh, Spain was one of the most boring races on the calendar years ago. I remember there was once there was one overtake in the whole race once and even if you watch GP3 on Saturday, you know, there was like there was barely any overtaking after the first couple of laps and then the cars just went round and round. I'm racing here by the way, these aren't expert laps, this is just me jumping in the car, I've not even driven these, I hadn't even had a practice, just jumped on here, did some laps, so you will see some, 
you know, mistakes here and there, but that's fine. I tell you, it's really different driving this car once you've been on playing something like a Seto Corsa, because there is so much more depth to that, and then you come back to this, and though they've got some nice systems there, in terms of physics of the suspension and tyres, you can see that there's not as much depth there. Uh, as there would be in a simulator like that. But either way, it's lots of fun. Now, I have to admit, I do prefer driving the classic cars. This is a circuit I used to love years ago, one of my favorite circuits, uh, but I, I really dislike this latter half of the track now. These corners here and the final chicane, it, it, you know, Martin Brundle would r refer to them as Mickey Mouse, and I, I, I can't help but feel the same way. I feel the circuit's lost its flow. This final couple of corners was fantastic in the old cars. I loved the second to last corner, the speed you could carry through there, fantastic. And now they've, they've changed it. I don't know, I don't like this chicane with the sausage curbs, but either way, it's there for a reason. Bunch the cars up and give them an opportunity to overtake each other down into turn one. So I hope you're enjoying the GoPro uh, action that we've had on the channel. And again, I'm doing my best to keep regular coverage coming out. I'll be doing a blog as well this week, just updating you all on what's going on in a different world of VVV, what we're looking to do, and where we're looking for some help as well from the community, get some more people involved in what we do on the channel, because it does help us in terms of regular video output uh, and also getting ideas from you more of what you'd like to see on the channel as well hopefully eventually some you know again you know we've got i racing to come it's uh, this week uh, and then once we're into that there'll be a bit more competitive online racing as well i don't think i'll be competitive but at least you'll see some online racing on the channel and hopefully we can find some help to help out with that as well so on this final lap then i was losing a bit of concentration here i just wanted to get the video done and then that was it a race over and done with but an enjoyable race today. Good to see Fernando getting past uh, Kimi. He was quicker throughout the race. Kimi not happy at all. You could tell he was furious towards the end there. Fantastic drive from Sebastian Vettel coming up 10 places. Ricardo rock solid as ever. And of course throughout the field, there was some good driving and action throughout the field. But for me, my driver of the day is actually surprisingly Sebastian Vettel uh, coming through like that. Some great overtakes and a great result. But that's it for me for now. As ever, more soon.